Poštovani gledatelji, dobar večer. Evo nas u još jednoj emisiji Hrvatskih povijesnih istina. U večerašnjoj emisiji Hrvatskih povijesnih istina moja gošća biti će doktorica Esther Gitman, izraelska i američka povijesničarka, ekspert za holokaust na području bivće Jugoslavije s težištem na istraživanje nezavisne države Hrvatske. Rođena je u Sarajevu, dakle je spašena uz pomoć lokalnog hrvatskog stanovništva za vrijeme vlasti NDH. Po završetku drugog svjetskog rata, kada se s majkom našla u Italiji, iz Italije je otišla natrag u Sarajevo, te će odande biti poslana u novodeklariranu državu Izrael godine 1948. U Izraelu je završila gimnaziju i služila u vojsci, diplomirala je koleč nastavnika, te se udala za Izraela Gitman i rodila dijete. 1967. nakon šestodnevnog rata otišli su u Montreal, gdje je suprug Izrael doktorirao, a 1972. otišli su u Ameriku u podričuće Njorka, gdje će napraviti u istinu svjetsku karijeru. Diplomirala je doktorirala na prestižnim svjetskim svučilištima, a zadnjih 25 godina temelito se bavila istraživanjem NDH naposled djelovanja kardinala Stepinca i o tim istraživanjima je objavila nekoliko svjetski zapaženih knjiga. O njenim istraživanjima i problemima na koje je nailazilo, evo ekskluzivno intervju za pres, za hrvatske povijesne istine. Doktorice Gitman, poštovanje, dobro večer i dobrodošli u hrvatske povijesne istine. Dobro večer, ja vas molim, ja, ja ću govoriti s vama engleski. Ok. <laughs> Ako je to ok. Je, je, bez brige. Doktor Isegitman, preživili ste holokaust zahvaljujući činjenici da ste se uz pomoć nekih ljudi uspjeli izvući iz tadašnjeg Sarajeva. Zatim danas ja. pa, pamtite barem dio tih dramatičnih trenutaka, pa bi molio da s tim impresijama započnemo razgovor. Well, ja, ja sam imala samo godinu i po kad je rat počeo, tako da e, prve godine ja se ne sjećam o... Oh. I don't remember the first years, of course. And if you know, um, Holocaust survivors rarely wanted to tell their children the stories of horror. So uh, I can tell you what I know from historical uh, research, but not from real flesh experience. Da, razumijem. Uh, my mother uh, was a widow. My father died in 1940 when I was just four months old. And um, our neighbor or our tenant told my mother that the situation will be very difficult and she should escape the Italian zone of occupation. It was known that the Italians do not kill women and children, and they do not kill even unarmed men. Uh, she asked her parents to join her and two sister. Nobody wanted. She, on her own, left. She reached the Italian zone in Mostar, And from there, she moved to Split. Uh, uh, when the situation in Split was began to be difficult, there were many Ostoshe around. They suggested that these Jews relocate to Korchula. We were in Korchula until the capitulation of Italy. And from there, with the help of many uh, 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 people, we reached Bari. We were in Bari until, until 44, and then the, the Nazis began bo bombing Bar Bari, and we were relocated to Santa Maria Albano. And there we were fed by the La Sam and also uh, American aviators uh, post was near Santa Maria and um, and they gave us 
hand food and all that we needed. Um, in uh, 1945, with the end of World War II, we came back to the shores of uh, former Yugoslavia and reached Sarajevo. Um, in Sarajevo, we met our grandparents, my grandparents were a, a seamstress and a tailor, and they were slaves of the highest authority, German authority in Sarajevo. They did not, of course, die, but they were below weight, like maybe children. I have some pictures, but uh, so. We stayed there, and Tito really did not like the Jews. They, he wanted uh, unity of all people. He wanted the Jews to forget what has happened. He didn't want the Jews to get their property back or businesses. And then Israel was established, and he said, you all have to go. He, of course, kept only a few people that are uh, of value to his regime. Uh, again, without any property, any money, we embarked on a ship called Kefalos. It was a Panamanian ship, old and broken down. As it was cargo ship, so the, the conditions were terrible. And instead of being on sea seven days, we were 28 days. Some died on this journey. Um, it was difficult, very difficult for the Holocaust survivors. They didn't speak the language. They couldn't read. Hebrew is a very difficult language, and uh, to learn to read and, and, and speak was difficult. Everything was upside down for them. We, the children, of course, adjusted very easily, but for the adults, it was like a death sentence. So this is what Tito uh, did for us. You ask me how I was under Tito. Uh, 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 it was bad. Also, they were afraid. They were all the time in fear that there are spies behind the doors, in the walls. And all what I remember as a child Zidovi imayo ufshi. I all the time with my little friends, we were looking all around to see the ufshi, the, the the ears, but we couldn't see. We figure out maybe when we will grow older, we will see the ears. So that's uh, uh, my experience in. Uh, Sarajevo after World War II and moving to Israel and trying to find homes. And uh, we were in a camp for several months, and then everybody was on his own. Uh, as I said, for the adults, it was very difficult. They couldn't read the newspaper. They, they could not. The only thing that a little bit saved them was uh, Ladino. Ladino was a, a Spanish language that they spoke among themselves. And this is what uh, com combined or gave them an association with a greater group whether they were from Bulgaria or Romania or uh, 
wherever those who spoke uh, uh, Ladino, the Judo Spanish language, this was their common language. Da, doktorice Gitman, uh, uh, htio sam vas pitati uh, kako je počelo vaše zanimanje za Hrvatsku? Zapravo vas hoću pitati kako ste kao uspješna poslovna žena došli na ideju da u zrelim godinama, kad drugi misle na mirovinu, da se bavite tako osjetljivom temom spašavanja židova za vrijeme NDH i to pogotovo spašavanja židova, ali i Srba od strane kardinala Alojzija Stepinca. Što ste na tu temu našli i mogli naći u hrvatskim i u stranim arhivima? Um, prvo, ja sam... Uh, 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 I decided to leave the business. It was very uh, consuming time and energy. And after 25 years uh, of... Uh, flying to California and stuff and uh, selling. And I decided that this is enough for me. And also I had a great desire to find out who saved us. How did we survive? How my mother, a widow, uh, a, a single woman, f found the energies to escape Sarajevo and to, to survive this. And I really wanted to ta thank the people, to say thank you for uh, rescuing us. Thank you for helping us. This was my ob objective. And I wanted, also my uh, daughter, a mother of six, was asking all the time, What can you tell us? How did you survive? What happened? All the time. And then I figure out, okay, I don't know anything. I started to look in the, uh, the library, libraries and bookstores for some information, and I found nothing. Especially nothing on Yugoslavia, but a lot of on Poland, uh, uh, Germany, and so on. So I figure out it is time for me to uh, get started with the research. Uh, serious research. I, I ask my family what the, do they think if I'll go for a PhD, and they say go for it. So I uh, uh, passed the uh, very difficult exams pre that are pre-requirement for uh, uh, being accepted to, for a PhD program. It, uh, it is GRE's graduate record exams. You uh, have to uh, so, <laughs> solve many puzzles, uh, English. Arithmetic. So I was lucky. My husband is a scientist, so he taught me all the arithmetic and uh, calculus and all other things. Uh, and so I passed this exam and enrolled into the program. I work very hard, exactly like I worked for my business. If need be, 24 hours around the clock. And my objective was to get the best grades that a student can get. And I had, I finished with a 97% average. Uh, having these grades, I knew that if I want really to do research, I must get to uh, uh, Croatia or uh, Bosnia or wherever. And uh, I went for a Fulbright uh, uh, fellowship. Everybody, even my professor said, Esther, you have a high grades, but you have also a high age. I was close to 60. So um, they said, don't even try. I said, no, this is not me. I, I will try. And... 
when I uh, was invited with many other students to, 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 to a committee of Fulbright, they came to me and they asked, what is your topic? And I said, rescue of Jews in the independent state of Croatia. They were alarmed. Why would you want to do this? Don't you know that all the Jews were murdered there? I say, I know, but I survived, my mother survived, and all the Jews that I knew in my childhood survived. <gasps> they, they, they <laughs> go for it, write a strong proposal, and send it to us. After four months, I got an answer. You got a year Fulbright Fellowship to Zagreb. Um, it was a very happy day for me, and my husband uh, was willing to join me. And we felt that this is a new chapter in our life at that time. So uh, I, uh, in order to get this Fulbright, I uh, had to find a mentor, a professor from the Zagreb University. So somebody gave me Ivo Goldstein's name. I um, wrote to him. I, I gave him all the details. And he said he agrees. Maybe this is his biggest mistake, but my very joy, and I thanked him in everything that I wrote. I thanked him for uh, being the mentor. When I came to uh, Zagreb the first uh, 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 week, we had a meeting at the American ambassadors, all the Fulbright uh, recipients, and we were instructed what to do, how to behave, what to act, and, and so on. And uh, there I met Ivo also for the first time. Um, when we went down, Ivo told me, look, Esther, you can do whatever you want, but I can tell you as an historian that there is no, there was no rescue, so to speak. I told him, you know, Ivo, I work very hard to get this uh, fellowship. I owe it to myself, to my family, and also to those who trusted me. I will do everything. I'll go to the archives every day, from morning till close, and I'll collect documents that remotely or directly are related to rescue. I work really in the archive, and they, I got help from Dr. Kol Kolanovic, who, who, he, she, he was the director of the museum, everything that I wanted, and also the Ministry of Science, Science and Education, I think, help me to copy as many documents as I need per day, while all the other students were allowed to copy only 100 copies a month. So here I had enormous advantages by, by being a Fulbright scholar. I really sat and I piled a maybe a meter and a half of a document. So my husband said, look, you have to de do something with this document. They are not going to tell you a story. They are single document. So I said, what am I going to do? He said, you must find a common denominator between the uh, documents. How am I going to find? I thought, you take a pile and see what is there. So I thought, oh, the man is crazy. But 
I had no better solution. I took about two, three hundred documents and I started to review them. And suddenly I saw there are many documents about doctors, about engineers, about the Catholic Church, about the peanuts. And I couldn't believe that an ar Catholic archbishop uh, would save Jews. I, I really had my brain close to it. We always in uh, uh, Israel knew that it is the Serbs who saved us and the Croats sent us to concentration camp. When I started to uh, uh, pile and, uh, and searching, I saw, my God, the Croatian really saved. No, some uh, uh, rescue was done out of necessity, because when they started to send Jews to concentration camp, the businesses began failing, and the Croa Croatian people started to scream. So what now? We have our own government, but our children are hungry. Please bring them back. So many of uh, uh, these Jews were pulled out from the uh, uh, centers of uh, 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 where they joined to others to, on the way to concentra concentration camps. So I found that, uh, first of all, Pavelic recognized that sooner or later this war will end and the country will need people. So they gave to uh, important people uh, honor honorary Aryans uh, a title. There were about 100 of those. They got back all their possession. They got back uh, uh, their uh, positions, and those were the honorary area. Then they needed to bring back people that will factory owners, business owners, because the Croatians saw that the minute that they will get uh, uh, the business, they will only make money. But you needed much more than just be in a business. So they started to bring back uh, uh, business people, they released engineers, doctors, and gave them a title of they, they were not to be molested, they were not to be harassed by, by the Ustashe. They had uh, Aryan rights. Whatever any Croat had, they also received. So here, uh, a whole group of individuals uh, was rescued. Ko je ubio Zvonka Bušića? Jedina knjiga tiskana u Hrvatskoj koja donosi detaljan životopis Zvonka Bušića, čovjeka koji je za Hrvatsku u zatvoru proveo pune 32 godine. Uz ekskluzivne informacije o otmici zrakoplova, ekskluzivne fotografije, Detalje iz Zvonkovih zatvorskih dana, knjiga donosi niz nikad objavljenih informacija vezanih uz spektakularnu otmicu zrakoplova. Hrvatske novinarske tragedije od 1945. do 1995. Doslovno jedina knjiga ikad tiskana u Hrvatskoj koja donosi detaljnu pojmeničnu analizu i sudbinu svih novinara koji su pisali za vrijeme nezavisne države Hrvatske. Nakon 1945. ubijeno ih je 38. Stotinu i jedan dobio je doživotnu zabranu pisanja. Više od stotinu ih je pobjeglo iz zemlje, 40 novinara je promijenilo profesiju pod pritiskom, a samo 27 ih je dobilo pravo pisanja. Knjiga ekskluzivno donosi i statistiku pogroma nakon pada Hrvatskog proljeća. Godine 1972. 50 novinara je završilo u zatvoru, a 172 na crnim listama. Ova knjiga tematizira i statistiku pogibije novinara u domovinskom ratu. 
Regija kao treća Jugoslavija, još jedna Dujmovićeva uspješnica u kojoj se detaljno analizira kako se pod pojmom regije uporno i ustrajno vraćaju stara jugoslavenska rješenja, kako u kulturi, tako i u sportu, glazbi, ali i u ukupnoj politici. Mali noćni razgovori ljevice i desnice, dramaturški tekst po kojem je napravljena kazališna predstava, iznimno zanimljiv politički razgovor koji noću vode dva hrvatska umirovljenika, sukobljavajući najvatrenije argumente koje je povijest ispisala u povijesnoj polemici Hrvatske ljevice i desnice. Sijena svake knjige je 20 eura, a poštarina je plaćena. Naručba je na telefon 099-3996-011. Svojedobno ste izjavili što se tiče vaših otkrića da je kardinal Alojzije Stepinac za vas zapravo svetac. Zašto tako mislite? I heard about him the first time from the archives, from the documents and I couldn't even believe that such a person would care Uh, to rescue and uh, save Jews. So um, I collected a whole uh, uh, pile of documents and that help also from Jure Kristo and also from um, um, what's his name? <laughs> uh, the name? The Jurai Batelia. So I studied it and I, I couldn't believe how this man cared for every person. I read one uh, paragraph that made me almost cry. He said, when you are approached by people of Jewish or Croatian face, who asked you to convert them in order to save their lives. Accept them. Do not ask from them any knowledge of our religion. And when the time of this madness and craziness passes, those who will like our religion will remain with us while the others will go to their own religion. I remember it by heart because this also touched me so. Also, Stepinac emphasized that there are no such, there is no such a thing as race. There is only one race, the human race created by God, and it includes the gypsies, the black, the Jews, and all the others. So what can you say? You can begin to understand why I thought about this guy. In addition... Dakle, uh, ako sam dobro shvatio vaša istraživanja, ona bi se mogla svesti na dvije točke. Antisemitizam među Hrvatima je bio neznatan. Bio je nametnut od nacista. Njemu su se usprotivili svi slojevi društva, pa je spašeno oko četvrtina židova, više nego li u bilo kojoj drugoj zemlji pod kontrolom nacista. I drugo, katolička crkva u NDH na čelu sa nadbiskupom Stepincem predvodila je spašavanje židova. Ja. Ne, da li nešto fali ovom zaključku? Ne, ja ne mislim. On, on je e, bio... Uh, um, uh, he was more than a saint, really. To, to, uh, he saved all the mixed marriages between Catholic and Jews. He, he did everything in his power when when uh, uh, Jews had to wear the sign G, G for Jido, uh, he instructed 
seven of his priests and nuns to wear this symbol, so to shame uh, Pavelich, because he felt that no human being has to be marked with the symbol of shame. Uh, I can tell you hundreds of instances where I saw the humanity and the care of this man. He dared to go on BBC in 1943, a peak of the war, and argue that he is ashamed that uh, 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 such horror is taking against another group of people. So uh, when, uh, when uh, uh, in the Italian zone, the um, governor of the zone, Bastianini, saw so many Jews roaming around unemployed and so on, he decided that he is going to ship all of them back to the Worcestershire. The sorrow, the cries, when the Peanuts and Abbot Marconi heard about it, they said this won't take place. They called the Vatican, they called everyone that they knew and asked uh, uh, to obtain a stay for the Jews who were in uh, in the Italian zone. There were about uh, 3,600 in uh, on the island of Rab. There were in Kolchula and Vallaluca about 1,000. And they stayed, of course, until uh, 1943, the capitulation of Italy, and then uh, they moved uh, to Bari and other places. But this is the work of Archbishop Stepinac. Da, uh, recite mi, uh, po vašem istraživanju, kako je bilo postupanje sa židovima u drugim državama u odnosu na NDH? Kako je, recimo, bila situacija u Srbiji? Ja, ja nisam puno... Uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't really follow much uh, 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 the Serbs. Uh, in Israel, uh, in Israel, uh, there was a organization that promoted uh, uh, the Serb activities. Uh, later on, um, uh, I found out that there was a Jewish woman, Clara Mandic, that decided to raise all the history uh, uh, of uh, uh, previous activities of, of uh, Serbian. I knew that already in 1942, Serbia was free of Jews, you don't fray. And uh, I did some research but not a lot. I know that they had a tremendous uh, discuss of Jews. It, it was shown in the uh, exhibition that they had in uh, for months and months, where Jews were portrayed in uh, uh, many negative. negative and ugly uh, forms. I know that people, even Serbs, like uh, Eva Nahir or, and uh, others, uh, wrote and told stories, stories of uh, what was going and happening in uh, uh, Serbia. Uh, trucks uh, that uh, with women and children were pumping gas into them, and uh, so Serbia was the first uh, capital city in Europe that was free of Jews. I did read a, a very uh, a major work uh, 
uh, Serbia Secret War by uh, Philip Cohen. Uh, it was uh, informative. And later on, Emil Kerini, who was uh, uh, from Serbia and now worked in the Holocaust Museum in uh, uh, Washington, D.C., also wrote uh, uh, a lot negative stories. Now I heard that the uh, bishop uh, 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 compares me to, to um, Greif. <laughs> U prodaji je najnovija knjiga Tihomira Dujmovića Hrvatske povisne istine nastala po emisijama emitiranim na Z1 televiziji. Nepoznati detalji o rimskim sporazumima, istina o vladiranog ajcu koji je 45. osobno potpisao 748 smrtnih presuda da bi i danas jedna Zagrebačka ulica nosila njegovo ime. Zatim nikad objavljene tajne o puču Vokić Lorković, analiza laži o sudbini kozaračke djece kao i broju žrtava Jasenovca, Istina o osmome svidnja, kada je ubijeno 11.000 Zagrebčana, a 26.000 ih je uhičeno. Detaljan prikaz srpskog genocida nad Hrvatima, te britanske prevare na Blajburgu. Kao i otkriče FBI-a da je Beograd u Ameriku slao lažnog Nikolu Teslu da daje medijima izjave u korist Četničkog pokreta. Samo su neke od tema ove knjige. Sadržaj kakav u Hrvatskoj do sada nikad nije objavljen. Knjigu možete naručiti na broj 099-3996-011, a cijena je 25 eura s plaćenom poštarinom. Kako je bila sudbina židova u Titovoj Jugoslaviji? To je meni malo smiješno. Tito je brat... Tito je slogan bratstvo je jedinstvo. Brotherhood and unity. He wanted the Jews that came from war to their home. He didn't want them to bother others. He didn't want to put them to trial. He didn't want to, uh, uh, he needed them. He needed a manpower, Muslim manpower, Serbian and, and, and of course Catholic. He wanted the Jews out. And as I said before, I heard the story of the ears. They, they just heard something that some of these Jews said and up he went to prison. So the, the situation was really uh, uh, bad, and uh, most of the Jews uh, 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 left Sarajevo. Uh, mi sad, imate uh, sveučilišne diplome sa nekoliko sveučilišta iz Amerike i Kanade. Uh, napisali yeah. ste stvarno čitav niz uh, knjiga, izdali ste dvije vrlo značajne, svjetski značajne knjige o Alođi u Stepinicu i održali širom svijeta jako puno tribina. Htio sam pitati, da li ste iz stručnih krugova dobili nekad negativnu recenziju toga što ste pisali? Odnosno toga što ste istražili? Ne, jer jako malo... Very few people know the history of Jugoslavia. They know that... It was off on Yugoslavia. They knew that there was a war between the Croats and, uh, uh, and the Serbs. Uh, uh, no, I did not get. People like to hear what I had to say about the peanuts and about other uh, entities that were involved in the rescue of Jews. Uh. Suprotno ovome što govorite, vi najčešće govore predstavnici Srpske pravoslavne crkve. U zadnjih par mjeseci na Hrvatskoj televiziji čak dva puta gostovao je episkop Srpske pravoslavne crkve, Jovan Čuliborg, i oba dva puta je bio dosta kritičan i prema vama. Vidio sam i reakciju profesora Golštana koji je tvrdio da za Stepinca da po njemu nije dovoljno učinio. Ja. 
Je li vam, možete li nam opisati neki primjer gdje bi Stepinac mogao učiniti nešto više i je li vam poznat primjer nekog drugog crkvenog velikodostojnika u tom vihoru drugog svjetskog rata i porobljene Evrope koji bi na glas rekao u prkos toj vlasti, kao što ste i sami citirali, da na svijetu samo postoji jedna Božja rasa. Unatoš rastim zakonima u okviru kojih je djelovao. Ja znam da su govorili o meni, ali on ne može mene i Grajfa metniti u istu kategoriju. I invited both Zorov. I lived in Israel for three years recently. And I invited both of them for a discussion about the peanuts, about the war, provided that they bring documents, and I bring documents. And we prove they never wanted to, to come and discuss with me. In fact, in Israel today, most of the people think still that the Croats were those who murdered and the Serbs were the good guys. This is what I, when I came to, to Zagreb for a full fellowship, I had this idea. I didn't know anything about the peanuts or Croat. World War II and the Holocaust was far from my mind. And this is when I started to read about Archbishop Stepinac, I couldn't believe how he cared, how he behaved towards. And in fact, I just recently found uh, two quotes, one from uh, uh, Rabbi Herzog, the grandfather of the current president of Israel, who brought to the uh, uh, Vatican and also to Stepinac, a thank you letter in 1944 for saving the Jews. So it is not my invention. The more that we will uh, uh, research, uh, we will see that other people really admire Stepinac for what he has done. Kraj, jedno pitanje. Što bi po vašem mišljenju trebalo učiniti hrvatske svjetovne i crkvene vlasti glede proglašenja Alozija Stepinca svetim? Napokon, je li kanonizacija Stepinca crkveni ili politički problem? Ja mislim, no, both. I think that you see, there is in the archive a huge box of documents that were sent to Yad Vashem in Israel by Dr. Theodor Gruner and Misho Montilio. The last box was sent in 1993. I informed everybody from your cardinal to, to, to the universities, to everyone, to find, because this box is huge. There is only one woman that speaks Croatian, and, and she doesn't like so much Croat. To, to find people to translate this box of documents. Mm -hmm. if, yeah, they had to translate it to English. It is not so much, and it doesn't cost so much. Why? Why they we're not doing the boxes probably sit somewhere in the basement thrown for years just because of laziness and not caring enough to do this for the archbishop that gave them so much Još za kraj možemo li očekivati da Jadja Šem kardinala Stepinca proglasi pravednikom među narodima Ne to vam ka this is what I am telling you there are documents that were sent. They are in Croatian. Nobody can read them. I ask people to translate them. 
many people promised, yes, yes, even Cardinal Bosanich, and nothing is done. I do not think that he will ever become, not because he doesn't deserve, but because people have no information about him. What is used in documents that are in Croatian where nobody reads and speaks Croatian? Dr. Segizma, thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you very much for your work and your investigations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Poštovani gledatelji, evo čuli ste doktoricu Ester Gitman, čuli ste njezina istraživanja. Usporedite s onim što je vama i nama dostupno i opet ćete vidjeti da je problem ponovo isti, ponovo među nama i ponovo među našima koji uporno ne dopuštaju da puna istina, prava istina i o kardinalu Stepincu izađe vana, onda se u tom prostoru dopušta i pruža prostor, zahvaljujući stotinama silnica, da se umješaju drugi, oni koji ga ne vole od kad ga ima, oni koji nas ne vole od kad nas ima. Zato postoje hrvatske povijesne istine i ovo je jedan komadić tih hrvatskih povijesnih istina o kojem, nažalost, ne znamo previše. Poštovani gledatelji, vidimo se idući tjedan, do onda moje poštovanje.